Hey guys, Kevin here again. Sorry I haven't been with you in a while, but it's been a pretty challenging summer for me. Uh, got a head-on collision. It was pretty scary. Texting and somebody was texting and driving, came across the center lane and right into me. But my angels were watching me, I was okay. So that was that was not fun. And then just recently, one of my best friends, he's brother to me, he just passed away because of COVID. Unfortunately, he wasn't vaccinated. So that's been wearing on me a little bit. So anyway, my apologies for not getting videos out. It's been kind of tough this year. But everything seems to have calmed down. It is peak foliage right now here in Vermont. And I'm back at one of my favorite camping spots here in Waterbury Reservoir in Vermont. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go kind of bush crafty today. I brought my Polish lavu, just some wool blankets, lanterns, and uh, yeah, just taking a just taking a weekend for me. So nothing too fancy, no big trip, week long trip, nothing nothing crazy. But for me, I need it. I'm sure everybody out there knows what that's like. So yeah, I'm gonna keep paddling, get to my campsite. I've rented site 16 for the night. I'm looking forward to that. There's quite a few people out here right now, which for obvious reasons, it's beautiful out here. So, yeah, we'll get uh, we'll get to camp and get set up and we'll get back with you in a minute. So well, let's see what we've got here. Oh, looks like the fire is still warm. A little bit of smoke. That's a good thing. Be pretty easy to get that restarted for lunch. Yeah, this is a nice spot. Right along the water. There's where I'm gonna put my tent. Right there. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Pretty flat. What's up above me? Anything? There's trees. Doesn't look like there's any widow makers up there, so. Yeah, pretty nice sight. Yeah, this looks like an awesome spot. It's pretty flat, it's near the water. I got a beautiful view of the mountain and all the colors. So, yeah, like I said earlier, I have a Polish Lavu canvas tent. I'm gonna try to go a little old school this time. Uh, all I brought with me was some wool blankets, a cast iron frying pan, a lantern. I went real basic, so I'm kind of excited about this little trip. But yeah, I'm gonna get this thing set up. And uh, I also brought a hot tent, a little stove, a little cook stove, wood stove. So I'm gonna get that set up in here. It's one of those little tiny titanium ones, you know, the foldable stove pipe, they're pretty cool. So I'm gonna get that thing all set up so I can sit down and have lunch and relax.
all right let me bring you in close so like I said before Polish Lavu canvas tent this one's kind of cool it's got the date I don't know if you can see it 1980 almost as old as me at least that half of course obviously I don't know probably some of you know but maybe not all of you know that this tent half of this tent was actually a poncho for a soldier in the Polish army the other side was the other poncho so two soldiers two ponchos they button them together they have a instant tent so they're kind of cool there's quite a following for these things and this side as you can see 1875 this thing is the same age as me so kind of neat sleeping in a tent that's the same age as you and as I said before I've got my titanium stove inside foldable pack stove by seek outside got a little bit of wood prepped already there's my seek outside cub stove it's the ultralight they don't make this version with the square sides anymore they have a u-turn version but uh, yeah super lightweight stove just got some basic chicken wire to hold the opening the arm sleeve open that's worked pretty well for me in the past and as I said doing the wool blanket thing I am splurging a little bit and using a air pillow got to have a pillow got to sleep well but uh, yeah so that's my setup and then just in case you're curious in the morning when I wake up focus focus that's what I get to see so a little bit of oops cabot cheese extra sharp only way to go and uh, I did something over the summer made myself a Mora bushcraft knife I don't know if you've seen this but Mora they're pretty cool they they will sell you just the blanks so you can make your own scales your own handles so I found myself some black some walnut and uh, just cut the thing in half put the blank inside hollowed out made a little cavity drill out some pins the pins are all internal they're not external I kind of like that a little bit better I don't like the pin sticking out I don't know this just looks a little cleaner to me but yeah nice thing is you can make it so it'll fit your hand the way you want it to so I'm gonna try my try it for the first time doing feather sticks this afternoon I'm assuming it will cut cheese just as well as it will cut feather sticks but I'm hungry I haven't stopped yet, so it's time for lunch. You guys want one? Too bad. Mmm. Man, that's good. Here, that'll do for now. Oh, can't forget that. What time it is oh yeah I didn't bring a watch <clears throat> I didn't bring a watch I didn't bring a cell phone I didn't bring anything I wanted to be free of all of it I brought you guys with me but that's it so I have no idea what time it is I guess I could use the old-fashioned finger method you know 15 minutes per finger but the thing is it's overcast so I have no idea I'm guessing it's right around two o'clock ish maybe three so I think it's time to go find some firewood because I'm gonna want a fire tonight it's supposed to be cool it's supposed to be down in the 40s I guess I am gonna run my 
stove, but I'll probably do that in the morning. You know how it is when you get up early in the morning in your sleeping bag and it's cold. You don't want to get out of a warm sleeping bag or in this case wool blankets. So I'll probably do that in the morning. I'll fire that up. But in the meantime, this evening, I want a nice campfire. Plus I brought some whiskey. So yeah, let's go find some firewood. I'm sure there isn't much around here because it's a campsite and it's been picked over pretty well so we're probably gonna have to go for a hike but so what let's go you see where some people had cut down some stuff they shouldn't have right there little chainsaw marks are not supposed to be out here with chainsaws but recent years the uh, the Rangers have been cracking down on that kind of thing so I'm happy about that I actually know one of the Rangers his name's Chad he's a good guy he's been here for a lot of years I've known him for a while so okay I'm gonna start breathing hard we're getting steep Ooh, some birch bark I'm gonna need some of that especially if I'm gonna attempt a bow drill fire Just getting the loose stuff, stuff on the surface. Here we go. Here we go, this looks like. Yep. Dead standing. Yeah, something got to it. Looking for bugs. Oh, yeah. You're deader than a doornail. That's a pretty good sized piece. That should do me pretty well for this evening. Broken half when it fell. Oh yeah, bone dry. I hope. I hope. Oh, the can't find you. Well, I got lucky. Found that dead standing maple up there. Pretty happy about that. It's pretty good size, so I don't think I'm going to need any more than that. I only need a fire for an hour or two. I'm going to do most of my cooking on my twig stove anyway. And direct the heat more towards the pan with that thing. I love that little thing. Any of you guys out there have twig stoves? Just try one. Game changer. You don't have to worry about fuel. Run out of fuel, bring canisters with you. And I don't know, it's just kind of romantic cooking by a fire, right? So, yep, I'm gonna go back to camp, finish bucking that stuff up, and uh, I'll get with you in a minute. So, you know, when you get to this point, when you wish you had one other person here. You know to hold the other end of this so you can cut it well i do have another person here it's called my axe so the next time you need an extra pair of hands and you're alone try this if you have a stump so that guy under your axe now you got another set of hands
So there goes my buddy Chad, the ranger. Super nice guy. I invite you to talk to him if you're ever here. Keeps things in order around here. Keeps things clean. Any questions, you can just talk to him. Now let's see how my new little home project does with feather sticks. Carbon, no not carbon fiber, stainless steel, mora, blank on a walnut handle that I did up myself. I, the, the one problem with these blanks is that the spine is not a 90 degree spine so you're going to have to file that down if you want to be able to throw sparks with it. But, oh look at that. Look at that fine, fine tinder. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, see that? That'll be good. Alright. See how it does. Oh yeah. Like butter. Like butter. Woohoo! I like the stainless steel knives. They do take a little bit more to sharpen, but if you keep up with it, it's not so bad. Put it on a strop after every time you use it. Just don't let it get too far gone. Yeah, they don't throw sparks like carbon ones do, but you know, the last thing I want to do is bounce a rock off my knife if I can help it to make a spark. I usually always have a fair rod or something with me to start a fire, so. I do like these stainless blades, a little bit of water. You know, you're outside with it all the time. So, it's going to get wet. It's going to get dirty and nasty, you know. So anything that will help keep it from rusting is a plus to me. Look at that. Woo! Here's one. Here comes number two. Oop. Come on, don't go out. There we go. Oh, oh, we go out. Oh, still going. One little glimmer of hope. So, while that's getting going, I've got in here my bush pot, some boiling bag of rice. Nothing fancy, just some white rice. I'm going to show you guys this cool little recipe that I absolutely love. My father created it many years ago. It's pretty basic, but I use it quite a bit when I go out on trips. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. So I won't go all over all the whole thing right now. I'll kind of explain it as I go. But uh, yeah, it's going to be yummy. So, we'll get this thing going. Get the water on right off. Get that boiling. I think that rice is just about done. It's amazing, these little twig stoves. How efficient they are. You know, a campfire you need a lot of wood, a lot of energy to make your dinner. But with these little twig stoves, you just run around the campsite for five minutes, grab a handful of twigs, and you can cook your entire dinner. It's pretty amazing. So yeah, let's check on this. Oh yeah, she's boiling. So we'll set that aside. That's one of the ingredients to this dish. The next ingredient you need, cutting board and some chicken. I've got some of that carved chicken breast. It's already pre-cooked in a bag, so all I have to do is kind of saute it and warm it up. So I'm going to cut this into little cubes with my handy dandy cutting board. And I'm going to put it in this beautiful cast iron pan. 
my cast iron pan that nobody touches except for me and we're gonna fry it up with some butter and some cooking sherry I'll show you how that's done in just a second I've got my chicken all cut up nice and small the other nice thing about that bag chicken is it's resealable so if you don't use it all you can seal it up overnight hang it in your food bag doesn't quite <laughs> smell as much and attract all the animals so get your cast iron frying pan throw it on there get it nice and hot bring yourself a whole bunch of butter get that in there get that going let that melt down Oh, I want my fire to go out. You don't have to do this at home, do you? Stoke the stove. Using appreciation for how easy things are with modern conveniences at home. There we go. I don't know about you, but I love cast iron cooking. I'm impatient, I'm gonna start this stuff now. Oh, listen to that. Beauty of cast iron, heats so nice and evenly. Heats evenly on uneven heat. You know, fire might be hot over here, but this, this pan's gonna be the same temperature here as it is over here. May need a little bit more butter. We'll see how this goes. All right, it's starting to brown up quite nicely. Like I said, it's pre-cooked, so technically I could eat it right out of the bag, but I like those little crunchy bits. So one thing with this is you're gonna try to make kind of a roux, so you want plenty of butter in there. Sorry, this is not the most healthy thing, but I don't care, I'm camping. So quarter stick, half stick of butter, something like that, bunch of butter. Once you get the butter in there, and the chicken's all kind of browned up, now the best part. We're going to add some cooking sherry. You can see that. There we go. I don't deal with measurements. Put a liberal amount in there. Oh, I almost forgot a very important ingredient. Garlic. You can use one or two cloves, it doesn't matter. I have an Italian wife. I'm used to eating garlic, so I like a lot of it. But I'm gonna chop these up, add it to that roux. As you can see, it's starting to boil down. Still a little liquidy, but it's getting there. By the time I get this cut up, it should be right, ready to go. So, I'm gonna add that in there. And cut that up however you want, obviously. Let that go for another couple minutes. Just brown up that garlic real well. Now we add our rice. You know you go to the Chinese restaurant and you end up with a million of these extra things? Keep them, because this is what they're for. The soy sauce. Pretty salty, so it's up to you how much of this stuff you want to put in there. Wow. I don't know, that looks pretty good. Maybe I will save this last one. I'm just going to fry up this rice a little bit. And dinner is served, so hopefully you guys uh, try this out sometime. It's a pretty simple dish. Pre-cooked chicken, boiling bag rice, butter, garlic, cooking sherry, and some soy sauce. Follow those steps, cook it all up. You can thank my father for this. 
it is super good you know and do whatever you want to do you can add onion or mushrooms i don't like mushrooms so i didn't add any but you know add what you want Alrighty guys, wish me luck. I'm gonna try the good old fashioned bow drill. Now I am far from any sort of expert on this. I've only managed to start a bow drill fire a couple times with success at home. I've never done it out here in the wild. But so I'm kind of cheating. I'm bringing my, my kit from home that I know works. This is a piece of Eastern white cedar. You know, it's about as long as the hang loose symbol. That's what I was told and a little bit bigger around than your thumb. This is a piece of basswood. Um, I found that this, I've had the most luck with this. Starting, get, getting an ember with it. And then obviously my bow, piece of paracord. And my tinder bundle. My tinder bundle is just a bunch of jute. That jute cord that I broke up into really super fine, like human hair pieces it's about the size of a softball and then I added a bunch of shavings and a bunch of I, I have some Usnia some old man's beard in there and some other fine fine shavings of, of birch so hopefully this will work if it doesn't then I will resort to the good old-fashioned flint and steel so I know I can start a fire with that so it's getting dark wish me luck I'll try to bring you with me as long as I can. If it takes me forever, then I'll just bring you in at the last few seconds. And uh, who knows, I may fail miserably anyway. But here we go. A little smoke. All right. My little collection. Piece of birch bark. I think I am gonna grab my other glove because I think that I think that bearing block is gonna get really hot. Alright. So might as well keep that stuff right and that nice black dust. It's not bad. Just a couple seconds. Hey. Okay. Right there. So now carve my notch. The other nice thing about basswood, it's great for carving notches with. Because it's super soft. So just to wear gloves. I do wood carve on the side and you inevitably are going to slip and get yourself. So it's always good to wear some gloves or bring lots of band-aids. Okay, so I've carved my little collection notch in the bottom. I'll show you what I did. So, come on, focus. Focus, there, see? So that's the burn-in I just did. And as you can see, I made a little notch on the bottom. I made this a little bit wider, as you can see. So that'll collect a little bit more powder as opposed to just a straight notch straight down. I found that making like a little well kind of helps a little bit. So yeah, let's see, here we go. Certainly don't want to rush this. If you rush it, it'll never work, okay. Put my little piece of birch bark to collect my ember. Put that right there. Try to get this stupid thing back in the way it was.
There we go. Brace it on my leg. You know what? Is that notch deep enough? That notch isn't deep enough. Sorry guys. But I have learned all these little things have to kind of be perfect. If all these things aren't perfect, you'll never start a fire with a bow drill. Okay. What do you think, guys? Should I keep that stuff? I guess I should, huh? I just add to my ember. I gotta take a break. <sighs> All right. I don't want to take a break, I want to fire. I probably should. Give myself five, 10 minutes to relax and recoup. But I'm impatient. Try again. baby yes yes I got an ember there it is there it is okay I've got time but not a lot of time let's see if I can get this done oh she's a nice bright ember too excited I'm so excited I just can't hide it okay this guy in there nice and gently
Come on, girl. Let it work for a minute so I don't blow out the ember. A little moisture in the air might have got my tender bundle wet, who knows. Come on. Yes. Ah, thank God. Real time, everybody. Bow drill fire. Practice makes perfect. It's the third one I've ever done in my life. Thanks for joining me. I have made fire. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little excited. Woohoo! I didn't think that was going to go for a minute there. I thought my ember was going to burn out. I have to start over. Well guys, thanks for coming along on this trip today with me. I appreciate all your views, all your likes. I read all your comments. I love hearing the feedback. I think I just heard Bigfoot. And uh, anyway, I'm closing in on 500 subscribers. I'm pretty excited about that. So when I hit 500, I'll do another giveaway. It'll be a little bit bigger than the last one. Last time I did a leather tinder pouch, but this time I was thinking about maybe doing a homemade buck saw or, I don't know, something kind of cool. So please like, share, and subscribe. Share, share, share. My little channel is just, it's creeping up, but creeping up slow. I need all the help I can get. Only if you like this kind of thing, though, for sure. <laughs> but I'm going to sit here and enjoy a whiskey and a fire reminisce on the year past i wish it didn't exist <laughs> it's been a tough year i really miss my buddy my buddy terry terry if you can hear me up there in the great beyond this one's for you till we meet again someday brother Silly little thing.
morning guys got the wood stove going it was a pretty cool night last night I certainly was at the limit with these blankets it got down to the 40s probably mid to, probably mid 40s but I wasn't freezing to death but I was cool so I'm glad I have this wood stove in here so yeah I'm gonna get some coffee on warm up in this nice snug tent and uh, just kind of wake up with the world I guess I'm not sure what time it is it's still kind of dark out but I don't know I'll wait till it gets a little bit more light and enjoy my coffee in here and then I'll go out and make breakfast <laughs> Beautiful morning. Make sure this fire's out. Some pretty good coals in here from last night. Nothing left but ashes. My father always used to say he can tell how good somebody's fire was by what's left over in the morning. There shouldn't be any pieces of wood or chunks of wood or anything. It should be nothing but coals. So that's what I got. And I can attest it was a very nice fire. So yeah, I'm all packed up. I'm about ready to get out of here. I got a little bit of wood that I left for the next guy. I know I like to see that when I show up to a remote site, just something to get you started. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get out of here. Well, at least I'm gonna leave this campsite anyway. I'll load my boat, 
uh, Ranger Chad had uh, invited me over to his place yesterday. So he's four or five sites down. I guess he just built a brand new log cabin down there. He sticks around until mid-November or so. So I'm going to take him up on that offer and go see what he's got going on over there. And then, I don't know, I might just take a little easy cruise around the reservoir before I head home. So thanks again, guys, for joining me. Like I said before, sorry I haven't got a video out. I'll try to do better. And uh, thanks for coming along, and I'll see you next time.